Good morning students. In this session, we will continue with the classification of elements into SPDF blocks based on electronic configuration. Classification of elements with respect to electronic configuration, we are going to discuss. This is uh, the long form of periodic table which we already discussed about these postulates of long form of periodic table. The first period is called as very shortest period, second and third are first short and second short like that. And uh, in this periodic table, we have to remember few more points like, uh, see whatever the elements represented with the black color, except uh, hydrogen, of course, it is neither a metal nor a non-metal, except hydrogen, rest all black lettered elements in the table form, tabular form or metals. And even this uh, red colored elements are also metals, relatively less reactive metals. See, except this uh, blue and uh, blue and orange uh, and this this diagonal corner this uh, right top corner of these elements uh, rest all elements of this total box are metals only see aluminium gallium tin bismuth uh, and a new element livermorium and uh, tennessine up to tennessine they are all metals only and uh, these are uh, uh, 113 to 118 also recently IUPAC had given names, uh, namely 113th element is Nihanium and 114th element is Fluorovium, 115th element given with the symbol MCT is called as Moscovium, similarly 116th element Livermorium and 117th is Tennessine and 118th element is Oganesson. Okay, so in this way you have to remember which element comes under which class. In this total block, of course, except hydrogen, remaining all, see this set of all these elements are metals only. And elements which are given in blue color were non-metals. Even uh, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon and radon also comes under the similar category, but they are inert gases. That's why they are separately given with a different color. And in this set, uh, see some orange colored uh, elements were seen, orange lettered. Silicon, Germanium, Arsenic, Antimony, Tellurium, Polonium and Estatin, they are, um, they possess both metallic as well as a non-metallic character which comes under metalloid category. And these are 4F series and 5F series separately given. See, rare earths and uh, um, radioactive elements like that. So, we have to study this periodic table in a proper manner. One more, uh, one more point we have to uh, recap in this time. See, in the NCRT textbook, it's given these groups as 3A, 4A, 5A, etc. That's a wrong print actually. Already we discussed at that point also. A set of elements are the one which uses only outer electrons for valency. And B set of elements are the one which uses ultimate and penultimate electrons. Ultimate means outer shell. Penultimate means last but one shell. Both the electrons will be utilized for bonding. That's why these elements were separately called as B group of elements. That's a wrong print given in NCRT. Now, classification of elements based on classification of elements based on electronic configuration. Based on electronic configuration means uh, with respect to that, how to separate or how to study these elements in a separate manner. See, see actually before discussing this, we have to go through the term differentiating electron. Differentiating electron. What's meant by differentiating electron? Okay. So, what's that differentiating electron? Suppose if we take hydrogen 1s1. Hydrogen 1 electronic configuration is 1s1. And helium configuration is 1s2. Helium configuration is 1s2. Between this hydrogen and helium, among this hydrogen and helium, helium is getting differed from hydrogen by one electron. Yes, sir? No. Helium is getting differed from hydrogen by one electron. That one particular electron of which an element differs from its previous member, an element differs from its previous member, is said to be its differentiating electron. Is said to be the differentiating electron of helium. Understood? See, once again I am repeating. The electron by which, the see 1s2 means uh, one clockwise spinning electron or anti-clockwise? 1s1 means only clockwise spinning electron. Conventionally, we are following this one, right? Helium getting differed from hydrogen with this electron, right? This particular electron is called as differentiating electron of helium. Let's continue. 
Suppose lithium, electronic configuration, atomic number is 3, no, electronic configuration is 1 is 2, 2 is 1. So, what's the difference between lithium and its previous member helium? This 2 is uh, 1 electron. So, because of this 2s1 electron, lithium is getting deferred from its previous member helium. So, this 2s1 is the differentiating electron of lithium. So, in this way, what's the definition of differentiating electron? The electron, the electron by which an element, the electron by which an element differs from its previous member. The electron by which an element differs from its previous member, an element differs from its previous member is called as differentiating electron of that particular current element or whatever we are studying. So, what is the definition of differentiating electron? The electron by which an element differs from its previous member, 2s1 is the differentiating electron of lithium and 1s the second electron is the differentiating electron of helium in that way. Understood? Now, with respect to this differentiating electron, uh, we can classify these elements, long elements of the long form of periodic table into four blocks, namely S block, P block, D block and F block. So, based on the differentiating electron, where the differentiating electron is entering. So, where this differentiating electron is entering, it is entering into which orbital, which sublevel which sub-level, like that where, ultimate shell or penultimate shell or anti-penultimate shell. So, with respect to this position, where differentiating electron is getting positioned for a given element, with respect to that position, elements are classified into four blocks, namely S block, P block, D block and F block elements. So, totally elements were classified into four blocks, S block, P block, D block and F block and I am showing you these elements also, this 1A and 2A collectively called as S block elements. Okay, this all 3A to 0 group, this total group elements are called as P block elements and uh, these elements are shown in red color which are in between S and P blocks were called as D block elements and these all elements collectively called as F block elements means uh, uh, 4F series and 5F series are called as F block elements. They were called 4F and 5F because the differentiating electron is entering into F sub level of anti penultimate shell. Now we are going to discuss all these points. Now what are S block elements? What are S block elements? Definition is the elements in which the elements in which the differentiating electron elements in which differentiating electron enters into n s sub level or s sub level of ultimate shell. You can call it in either way ultimate shell. So, Elements in which differentiating electron enters into NS sub level, that is one definition, or elements in which differentiating electron enters into S sub level of ultimate shell. Here, this N corresponds to ultimate shell, last shell. N minus 1 is penultimate shell, last but one. N minus 2 is anti penultimate shell. This is the nomenclature, right? Now, once again, S block elements means elements in which the differentiating electron enters into ns sub level or s sub level of ultimate shell so usually this uh, first and second group are 1a and 2a groups uh, this is iupac notation this is old notation you have to learn and remember both this first two groups comes under this s block because if you write the electronic configuration of hydrogen its outer shell configuration only outer shell i am writing Outer shell configuration of hydrogen is 1s1, lithium is 2s1 and beryllium is 2s2. Sodium and magnesium are 3s1 and 3s2. Potassium and calcium are 4s1 and 4s2. Rubidium and strontium are 5s1 and 5s2. Cesium and barium are 6s1 and 6s2. Francium and radium are 7s1 and 7s2. See, if you observe, you, you can write it on your own. If you observe the outer shell configuration means last shell configuration you can see the presence of differentiating electron in 
outer s sub level outer s sub level that's why these first two groups comes under s block elements once again what are s block elements elements in which the differentiating electron enters into n minus 1 d so, uh, m, m. elements in which what are s block elements elements in which differentiating electron enters into ns sub level ns sub level are called as s block elements now uh, if you observe these electronic configuration in both the series first group as well as second group the differentiating electron is entering into s sub level of ultimate shell outer shell s sub level of outer shell that's why these two series elements are called as s block elements this is the first point about s block next point is this s block contains all reactive metals this s block contains all reactive metals see among all metals these are the most reactive one among all metals of the periodic table these two group elements are the most reactive metals and it includes it includes how many groups two groups s block includes how many groups two groups first group and second group or 1a group and 2a group how many groups are included in s block two groups were included see these vertical columns are named as groups horizontal rows are called as periods we already studied that in the first session two groups were included in s block namely first and second as per upac notation 1a and 2a as per old notation right what are the members of these two groups lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium and francium two a group elements are beryllium magnesium calcium strontium barium and radium i know you have got a doubt sir hydrogen you didn't include it in uh, uh, one a group elements or first group the position of hydrogen is not certain that's the main drawback of this long form of predictable because hydrogen shows similarities with this uh, first group elements it also shows similarities with this uh, 17th group element and in some aspects it also shows similarities with the uh, 14th group elements also understood that's why the position of hydrogen is highly uncertain so we need not include in the in the actual proper form of the predictable you can notice hydrogen is uh, displayed somewhere okay as uh, its uh, outer electronic configuration is similar as you are learning it for the first time to show the similarity had placed here otherwise position of hydrogen is uncertain it is not certainly given which is the main drawback of long form of predictable so now um, s block contains two groups namely 1a group and 2a group 1a group elements are lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium and francium which are also called as alkali metals which are also called as alkali metals and two a group members are beryllium magnesium calcium strontium barium and radium which are also called as alkaline earth metals which are also called as alkaline earth metals okay why they are called as alkali and alkaline earth metals means uh, these metals are their oxides uh, when dissolved in water they give basic hydroxides uh, these metals or their oxides when dissolved in water forms basic hydroxides in that sense uh, they were named as alkali and alkaline metals and this uh, corresponds to earth metals corresponds to their availability more, more uh, abundance in the earth's crust right now this this is uh, the constitution of s block it contains two groups namely first and second group or 1a group and 2a group etc now what's they outer electronic configuration what's their outer electronic configuration for s block next point i'm continuing here the next point about s block is they show the configuration of ns1 to 2 s block element shows the configuration ns1 to 2 see hydrogen shows hydrogen comes under 1s1 it comes under 1s1 lithium 2s1 beryllium 2s2 like that nth shell may vary first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh nth shell is varying but ns1 to ns2 within this range all these uh, s block elements are coming that's why their general outer electronic configuration is so what's the line proper line their general outer electronic configuration is ns1 to 2 
n is 1 to 2. Here one more point we have to notice. Sir, helium has 1s2 configuration. But why it is not placed in this? It is not metallic in nature. No. These are all metals. At least hydrogen can readily lose electrons in some cases. Hydrogen can lose electrons. Metal. It shows metallic as well as uh, um, uh, other ca characteristic properties also. That's why it is placed here. Whereas helium, even though its configuration is 1s2, it is not showing the relevant properties of these alkaline earth metals. That's why it is placed there as it is chemically inert. It is placed along with all other inert gases. Now, so we can have a question also. What is the S block element? Uh, um, what is the element uh, with S electrons but not S block, but doesn't belong to S block? That is helium. And then general outer electronic configuration of S block elements is NS122. And as S block element, S block contains all strong metals, and you know that strong metals act as a strong reducing agents. All S block elements are all S block elements acts as acts as strong reducing agents. All S block elements act as a strong reducing agents. So, like this, block to block, we have to discuss about their properties. So, once again, what are S block elements? We started this definition from here. Elements in which the differentiating electron entered into NS sublevel. N, N means outer shell in which S sublevel. Or elements in which the differentiating electron enters into S sublevel of ultimate shell. Okay, both are correct. Next. This is all reactive metals are present in S block and there are two groups under S block namely first group and second group or 1A group and 2A group. 1A group is called so because all those elements have one electron in their outer shell. 2A group element, 2A group is called so because all these elements have two electrons in their outer shell. So members of 1A group are lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium called as alkali metals. Members of 2A group are beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and radium called as alkaline earth metals and they were called so because they, when these metals are their oxides dissolved in water they form basic hydroxides which are alkaline in nature and their general outer electronic configuration is a NS122. All S block elements act as strong reducing agents and 1A uh, group elements as they have one electron in their outer shell they readily lose that one electron and shows plus one oxidation state. Whereas two year group elements as they have two electrons in their outer shell, they readily lose those two electrons and get plus two oxidation state. So the oxidation state of common oxidation state of a one year group element is plus one and a two year group element is plus two. This is about S block elements. As these S block elements are more reactive in nature, as these S block elements are more reactive in nature, they were never found in free state. They were never found in free state and uh, mostly, not mostly, always they are available in their combined state. And one more point is uh, uh, most of their compounds, uh, means uh, most of their compounds means except, uh, except the compounds of except the compounds of lithium and beryllium rest all are compounds of rest all elements are ionic in nature rest compounds of rest all elements except that of uh, lithium and beryllium the remaining all uh, elements compounds are ionic in nature why compounds of lithium and beryllium are not ionic because of their because of more polarizing power because of more polarizing power of Li plus cation and the smaller Be2 plus cation their compounds are mostly covalent their compounds are mostly covalent rather than ionic I am repeating as S block elements are highly reactive they are never available in their free state always they are available in combined state and in those combined state also all those compounds are ionic in nature except that of lithium and beryllium. Why compounds of lithium and beryllium are covalent rather than ionic? Because of the polarizing power of Li plus cation and smaller Be2 plus cation. We are going to study about this polarizing power in the chapter chemical bonding, the next one. 
Now when it comes to the mixed block elements, already we studied one S block elements, right? And when it comes to the next block, that is P block elements. So from the uh, S block elements observation, we can easily define P block elements. What we defined in S block elements? Elements in which the differentiating electron enters into NS sub level, means S sub level of outermost shell, right? The same way, P block elements can be defined as elements in which the differentiating electron elements in which the differentiating electron enters into enters into NP sub level or what's the other way we can give P sub level of ultimate shell so you should you should be familiar with the terminology to present it on the paper so what's the definition elements in which the differentiating electron enters into Elements in which the we already studied the differentiating electron definition. Elements in which the differentiating electron enters into NP sub level or P sub level of ultimate shell. Okay, and this P block includes P block contains how many groups of elements? Are? Six groups of elements, are. namely 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and zero group elements. And once again reminding you, this A, B classification was given wrong in NCRT. Actually, these are all belongs to A set of groups. Okay. Now, what are the members of 3A? Boron, Aluminium, Gallium, Indium and Thallium. 4A group elements are Carbon, Silicon, Germanium, Tin and Lead. 5A group elements are Nitrogen, Phosphorus, Arsenic, Antimony and Bismuth. 6A group elements are Oxygen, Sulphur, Selenium, Tellurium and Polonium and 7A group elements are Fluorine, Chlorine, Bromine, Iodine and Estatin. Of course, uh, this uh, Nihanium is also newly added and this uh, Flerovium in uh, 4A group elements and Moscovium in 15th group elements uh, and uh, Livermorium LV for 16th group elements and 17th group elements uh, Tennessine is added and zero group elements helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon and again so on. Okay, you have to remember these elements group wise. Total periodic table must be in your hold. Okay, then you can answer any question. So these are these are uh, the groups that were present in P block. Once again, elements in which the differentiating electron enters into NP sub level or P sub level of ultimate shell are called as P block elements. It contains six groups, boron family, carbon family, nitrogen family, oxygen family, fluorine family or halogens and inert gases. These boron family members are boron, aluminum, gallium, indium, thallium and nihonium. And like this we have to remember the elements wise. They are also called as the family with the first member, right? They are also called as a family with respect to the first member. And these are called 3A group elements because they have totally three electrons in their outer shell. Like boron has a 2s2 2p1 aluminium has a 3s2 3p1 gallium has 4s2 4p1 so total three electrons every element can contribute three electrons so this total group has a ns2 np1 this total group has ns2 np1 configuration and when it comes to the 14th group element or 4a group elements are ns2 np2 these group elements have ns2 np2 NS2, NP3 for nitrogen family members, NS2, NP4 for oxygen family members, NS2, NP5 for halogen family members and NS2, NP6 for inert gases. These members are called as inert gases as they are chemically inert. They have special names also. Zero group elements are called as inert gases. Their significance is they are called as inert gases because they are chemically inert and uh, halogens these are fluorine chlorine bromine iodine especially these four blue lettered elements these four elements are called as halogens halo means salt gen means product as they give salt products oxygen family members are called as chalcogens oxygen family members are called as chalcogens chalco means ore gen means product as most of the ores are in the form of these uh, 
elements like oxides sulfides selenides etc as many of the ores were observed in in the form of these oxides sulfides are in the form of these oxygen family members they are called as chalcogens and uh, these elements are called as picogens pico means foul smelling gen means product you might have noticed the smell of ammonia in the laboratory in schooling how pungent it is right as they give such pungent uh, um, foul smelling products they are called as picogens and carbon family members are best uh, for semiconductors they are used in semiconducting devices and boron family members are prone to form electron deficient compounds because they have only three electrons in their outer shell more three electrons with more three electrons they can form bonds finally they will get only six electrons after bonding and they are they get a deficiency of two more electrons to get octet eight electrons as they are uh, processing electron deficiency even after bond formation they their compounds are called as electron deficient compounds so in this way the they can their significance can be given next point about p block elements is um, their general general outer electronic configuration is um, what is their general outer electronic configuration for all these six groups uh, ns2 is quite common np it is starting with 1 2 3 4 5 6 np 1 2 6 so the general outer electronic configuration of p block elements is ns2 np 1 2 6 and then we have one more point here these p block elements contains all non metals see these all elements are non metals only whatever the elements i am marking here these all are non metals only all non metals are present in p block all non metals means even in that strong non metals are also present you know strong non metals are oxidizing agents strong non metal is stronger oxidizing agents so it contains all non metals all metalloids see all most of the metalloids are here only all metalloids and all metalloids and some metals some metals are present in p block that's why as most of the and not most of the as all non metals are present here it means all strong non metals are present in this it means all strong non metals are present in the same block yes or no that's why we can say p block contains all strong oxidizing agents p block also contains all stronger oxidizing agents so these are the points we have to notice from uh, the observation of this periodic table and uh, even these are also reactive and some are available in uh, elemental state uh, like uh, um, uh, oxygen you know that uh, oxygen is available as o2 gas nitrogen is available as n2 gas carbon is available in, in because of its high catenation so many forms of uh, allotropic modifications are possible boron is the element with high tensile strength uh, so their availability also we have studied and these inert gases are available in in atmosphere right uh, except radon radon is uh, generated during radioactive disintegration of radium these are some important points about p block